racial segregation was a part of life in the early 20th century. However, by the 1950s and 60s, America was swept up in a widespread civil rights movement. The March on Washington in 1963 was one of the largest political rallies for human rights in United States history. The march is credited with helping to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964, outlawing discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. The law prohibited racial segregation of schools, affirming the landmark Brown versus Board of Education U.S. Supreme Court decision from 10 years earlier. Social change was afoot, and local battles were being waged in communities all over the country, including Kentucky, to ultimately bring equality. The Brown versus Board of Education story is usually oversimplified. It's in textbooks and in basic history classes or uh, films, you'll get the basic understanding of the Supreme Court's 1954 ruling. And we know about the Little Rock Nine and some of the national standoffs, but just what was it like to start attending school together? To what degree did teachers and administrators comply? To what degree did uh, black parents want to send their kids into what might be kind of a dangerous situation? As school year started in 1956, a handful of uh, brave African Americans uh, in the Union County, Kentucky, in the town of Sturgis, uh, went and enrolled in the Sturgis school. And when a mob prevented them from attending after a few days, got word of this, Governor A.B. Happy Chandler ordered the National Guard in to make sure that they could attend. Uh, it became national news. Well, Western Kentucky was a perhaps more moderate in accepting the desegregation order than the rest of the South, but perhaps a little more uh, reluctant than the rest of the state of Kentucky. And that's why occasionally uh, court suits were necessary. In uh, Madisonville, in Hopkins County, uh, there was a effort to integrate the schools there by a, a handful of people and a local family. Uh, the Van Leer family and the Elliott family. And so in the uh, early summer of 1956, about 20 plaintiffs filed suit uh, against the Hopkins County School Board. Uh, some of these parents of these students lost their jobs. Some of them were harassed. And several of them started dropping off of the lawsuit. And when school started in September of 1957, uh, James Van Leer, I believe he was nine years old, uh, was the only student who actually withstood a lot of that heat and actually entered uh, what was called Waddle Avenue or Waddle Elementary School. My mother, she was um, every bit of four foot eleven powerhouse. She um, was an activist. She let her voice be made known, and she fought until there was a change. My father was a pastor, he was a minister, so he, he gave her the spiritual support. He was not the activist in the family, he was the protection and the, and, the, and, and the guard. My auntie was an amazing, powerful woman. She was no, no nonsense. Willie May, his aunt, was president of the NAACP. Also, his mother, uh, Elizabeth Elliot Van Leer, was president of the NAACP. Uh, they were very active in the community. They talked with James about what he might encounter. I later learned that after we were in college together that James did not tell them a lot of the things that happened to him, such as some of the name calling. He told them some, but not all of it. He kept a lot of that to himself. He didn't tell him sometimes of the shoving and pushing and things that happened to him at school. So he knew that what he was doing was important, and he knew it was important that it be successful. We talked about that. So therefore, some of the things that most children would have shared with the parents, he did not. He fought a fight that nobody else would fight. As a child, mom took him to the school, but he entered in the door without her. James suffered with sickle cell anemia disease. 
he suffered with this horrible disease and he was able to, to laugh, he was able to love, he was able to have fun. And I believe that his finding joy in life was his way of coping. The Van Leer family put up with a lot of abuse. Uh, there was, I think at least two times a cross was burned either in their yard or near their yard, uh, definitely directed at them. You know, they, they did go through a lot to do this. Integrace progressed slowly. Each year, a little, a few more win and a few more. And I think that's how it went up until 1966, when the doors were finally closed at the all black institution. So I believe that him starting into school in 1957 as the first um, Negro to enter in school put a fight in him that continued all the way through college. It continued all the way through college, probably continued after college. He stood for those things that are right. And I believe in his heart, he began to realize that discrimination and segregation and racial issues, all of that was because of the lack of understanding of love. Love covers all of that. Love was certainly evident in a special relationship that James and Dixie Logan shared. Miss Logan had been James' principal and teacher at Waddle Avenue Elementary. In 2002, they reflected with David Walford. There are lots of people that have changed and are so happy to be friends and mix and mingle with both races. And I think that's wonderful. No matter, no matter what, what you are, you know, black, white, whatever, you know, short, tall, there can always be problems that you can come up with. Life is easier when you, when you do what's right. To hear these stories from people that went through the process, it, it, it's been a fortunate thing uh, of, for me to just kind of experience this through them and, and to understand the process that's happened and how far along we've all come. James and his experience can lead us to a more perfect union if we will just take what he did and learn from it. And I think there are a lot of Jameses probably throughout the South in this country if we'll just take time to uh, find their stories.